On this worksheet, we're going to do a few different delta S calculations. The first problem is asking us to calculate the change in entropy for a chemical reaction. Here's the reaction right here. And it's giving us the entropy values for all the reactants and products. There are a couple of different ways that we can calculate the change in entropy for a reaction. One of those ways is Hess's law, products minus reactants. And since we have the, the entropy value for the products and the reactants, that would be the best equation for us to use to solve this problem. So again, when we're gonna use Hess's law to calculate the delta S of a reaction, we want to add up the entropy value for all of our products. In this reaction, we only have one product, it's H2O liquid, so here's its entropy value. And we're always going to be multiplying these entropy values by the stoichiometric coefficient for each molecule. The stoichiometric coefficient for water in this reaction is one. So just to be extra thorough, I'm going to go 1 times 69.91, and I'm going to leave the units off just to help save space here. So those are all of our products, our one and only product, and then from that we're going to subtract the entropy value for all of our reactants. We have two reactants, H2 gas, H2 gas's entropy value is 131. Again, there's only one H2 gas molecule in this reaction, so 1 times 131. And then to that, we want to add the entropy value for our oxygen gas. This is the entropy value for our oxygen gas, 205. The stoichiometric coefficient for oxygen in this reaction is 1 half. So we're going to go 1 half times 205. And then all we have to do here is the math. 69.91 times 1 minus 131 plus 1 half of 205. That gives us a value of, if I did my math correctly here, negative 164. The units are joules per mole Kelvin. In the second problem, it's asking us to calculate whether or not a process is spontaneous. If we're actually calculating whether or not a process is spontaneous, we're going to do that by calculating the change in entropy, entropy for the universe the delta S for the universe. If the delta S for the universe is a positive number greater than zero, that means that the reaction is going to be spontaneous. So to solve this problem number two, we have to calculate the change in entropy for the universe. The way that we calculate the change in entropy for the universe is by adding up the entropy for the system and the surroundings. So we want the change in entropy for the system, which is the chemical reaction, and the change in entropy from the surroundings is negative delta H over T, and it's the delta H of the chemical reaction. I'll squeeze that in there. We're gonna calculate the change in entropy using Hess's law, using these entropy values, and we're gonna calculate the change in enthalpy also using Hess's law, using these values right here. So I'm gonna begin by doing those two calculations. First, calculating the change in entropy for the chemical reaction, which is going to be our products minus reactants, each one multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficient. The products, we have two NO gas molecules, that's going to be 2 times 210.6. And our other product, we have one O2 molecule, that's going to be 1 times 205. And again, I'm getting these numbers from our entropy values that are provided to us. And then from that, we'll be subtracting our reactants, 2 times NO2, which is 240.46. And I'm going to do the calculations at the end here. For our change in enthalpy for the chemical reaction, we're going to do the same thing. Products minus reactants multiplied by their stoichiometric coefficients using our enthalpy values. 2 times the change in enthalpy for NO, for NO which is 90.4, plus 1 times the change in entropy enthalpy for O2, which is 0. And then from that, we want to subtract the enthalpy for two NO2 molecules, 33.85. So now that we have all uh, both of these set up, let's go ahead and do the math on both of them. 2 times 210.6, I'm starting with the delta S. 2 times 210.6 plus 205 minus 2 times 240.46. This is giving us a delta S of positive 145.28. Units are joules per mole Kelvin. 
And for our enthalpy, uh, change in enthalpy, 2 times 90.4 plus 0 minus 2 times 33.85. That gives us a positive 113.1, and those units are kilojoules per mole. So again, we calculated these numbers because we need to fit them into the equation for the change in entropy for the universe. The change in entropy for the universe is going to be the delta S value that we just calculated using Hess's law, 145 joules per mole Kelvin. I'm going to leave those decimals off. Minus the enthalpy value, 113 kilojoules per mole over the temperature. The temperature of the problem is 25 degrees C. We want this in units of Kelvin, so that's going to be 298 Kelvin. Now, before we actually solve the math on this problem, we need to recognize that we have some inconsistency with our units. We have a joule unit and we have a kilojoule unit. We need to convert one or the other. It doesn't matter which one we choose to convert. I'm going to choose to convert the joule to kilojoule because that I can just kind of squeeze into the problem here. To go from joules to kilojoules, we divide by a thousand. So I'm just adding this decimal point and then squeezing in that little um, kilo symbol. Okay, so now we're ready to actually do the math. And our answer is negative 0.235 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. Kilojoules per mole Kelvin. And the question was asking us, is the reaction spontaneous or not? We get that information from the delta S of the universe. This delta S of the universe is negative, so this reaction is not spontaneous.